Hi, this is Sweet Life, and I'm Natasha, back at it with a review and discussion of Meet the Parents. In the case of Meet the Parents, you have Greg, who's dating Pan, and they've reached a point in their relationship where he wants to take things to another step. At this point, um, they're boyfriend and girlfriend, but he wants to, he, he views her as the woman that he wants to spend the rest of his life with. As part of that, he plans to propose. He puts together like, she's a school teacher, he's a nurse. They're living together. They're really a part of each other's lives. And there's a pretty cute scene where he gets the kids at her school together to take part in this proposal. But in discussing Pop and the question, right, as this time is leading up to her sister getting married, um, Pam reveals that it's important to her that any man she marries asks her father for her hand in marriage, which is kind of like a traditional thing. And as part of that, it kind of puts the kibosh in his proposal. And so instead, they make plans to visit her parents um, where he'll meet her family and propose there. It's not really mentioned how long they've been together, but I would kind of think that although they live in a different city, if you get to the point in a relationship where you're planning to get engaged, especially for Pam to be so close to her family, that you might have, have already met each other's families by this point. You know, especially it's like she's not estranged from them or anything like that. But anyway, you know, we suspend disbelief so pam's sister is getting married and sees this as an opportunity for him or rather extends the invitation for him to accompany her to her sister's wedding and this is then an opportunity for him to meet her dad her mom her siblings to get to know her family and from his perspective it's an opportunity to speak to pam's father and ask for her hand in marriage now, this can be a tense and stressful moment, which I think it works really well for the movie. And it's part of why I don't think you should introduce everyone you date to your family, just like serious prospects. And not even people like you're dating. I think you should only introduce your parents to people you're in a relationship with if things get to the point where you're talking about engagement, getting married. You, know, you see a path forward with this person long term, especially if you're very close to your family. But prior to an engagement, not so much because you have to ask for the woman's hand in marriage, but it's stressful. You know, getting married, an actual wedding, it's a stressful event. There's a bunch of different moving parts. You have a bunch of people. And it's like, I feel like you don't need to compound the stress of the situation by also having it be the first time that you meet this person's family members because meeting new people it can be further it can be exciting but in a situation like this it can be stressful you being the new person coming into this environment can be stressful so it's like these two events on their own are enough stress much less combined it just ratchets up the tension but greg goes along to meet pam's family and i think you could describe meet the parents as a sort of disaster movie Usually when you think of disaster movies, it's like an apocalyptic type thing where the world is coming to an end. There's been some kind of great calamity, something along those lines that puts humanity in danger, eliminates some portion of the population, something along those lines, a great storm or something that's threatening or threatened a lot of people's lives. But this is a disaster movie in a sense, not with as far as being like the end of days, but, but because it's one of these situations where everything that could possibly go wrong does. And it makes for some absolutely hilarious entertainment. First of all, when Greg and Pam arrive at her parents' house, the mom seems to be okay. You know, she's pretty normal. But the dad, Jack, who's portrayed by Robert De Niro, is quietly intense. He's one of these dads who's you have some parents where it's like, no one is good enough for their kid. They obviously care for their children, but they take it to like an overboard kind of level. And for whatever reason, this tends to be like with opposite genders. So you tend to see this kind of thing where you have mothers that are like super overly protective of their sons and they want to interrogate and give a hard time to any woman dating their sons. And you also have this thing with some fathers where it's like with their daughters, no one's good enough for their little girl. With some families, it's like anyone you bring around, they're going to give them the third degree. And that's pretty much the case here. Where Pam, her parents have two daughters. Um, one who we've gotten to know by this time. Jack has gotten to know Pam's sister's husband and likes him well enough. But in meeting Greg, he doesn't really know what to make of him. 
And like he goes beyond just getting to know this guy, wanting to ensure that this is a good guy who cares about his daughter. He to like doing an actual background check. You know, just very overboard. And it's like, Greg doesn't help matters because part of it is his nervousness and his desire to make a good impression. But as a human and being imperfect, as most people are, you have like this perfect storm of personalities clashing where Jack is very intense, doesn't think anyone's good enough for his daughter. And then you have Greg, who's like this awkward, bumbling, but for the most part, very sweet guy. And it's like the combination of these two is just a recipe for disaster. And so over the course of the weekend, Greg tries to make a good impression, but the harder he tries, the worse things get. It's it's this thing of just everybody doing too much. Where he's trying so hard to make a good impression that his behavior is just overboard. It just creates more and more problems. But fortunately, it leads to some really funny moments. Part of it is that, like, Greg and Pam, they come from somewhat different cultures and backgrounds. Like, to start off, Pam and Greg, they have dinner with her parents. And it turns out that they're, like, Christian. Um, meanwhile, Greg is Jewish. So it leads to this awkward dinner table scene where you sometimes see this play out in, like, movies and TV shows, right, around Thanksgiving, where it's like one of the kids or a relative brings home a new romantic interest and like the family members make fun of them it's kind of like a generally light-hearted hazing of sorts and in getting to know each other questions are asked which can sometimes lead to awkward exchanges but again it's overboard here where greg is asked to say the prayer like he's jewish and so he launches into this very awkward prayer another member of the story here is the family cat who the dad he's like this very tough hard edged guy but he's like just completely obsessed with this cat the cat has been taught how to use the toilet which in and of itself isn't bad right because litter boxes tend to smell terrible but it's like you know the cat uses a toilet the dad has like all these pictures of him and this cat just weird and overboard in many levels insanity really so they have this whole conversation where in trying to impress Pam's parents, Greg launches into this ridiculous story of him rendering aid to this kitten by like milking, I think it was a cat or something like that. The physical comedy of it is pantomiming this thing of milking an imaginary cat, like pulling at the cat's teats with his fingers. And so it's like just this visual, it's one of these things you watch and I wonder like how many takes they had to do in making the movie because the scene is just so ridiculous that it's unbelievable that the actors and actresses are able to keep a straight face. It's like he's talking and milking this cat at the same time and it's like I would just lose it. And so you have this gradual introduction of more of the supporting characters. Um, so we have Pam's parents but then also like her brother, her sister. Sister doesn't seem too problematic. Neither the sister's fiance, but you know, you then have Pam's ex boyfriend who come to find out as an ex fiance. This guy is like the perfect man, according to Pam's dad, right? And so it's like you already have this stress of meeting the parents, Greg coming off as a bumbling idiot, and then here's this guy that she dated who her dad thinks is like the perfect guy. Parents just love and adore him. And it's like it just leads to more funny exchanges where. First of all, he's wealthy. He lives in this huge man house. Meanwhile, Greg is like a male nurse where there's nothing wrong with that. But it leads to the family kind of making fun of him, right? Where there's this thing that the rival is like a very hyper-masculine man. A man's man. And Greg is portrayed as being a bit soft. You know, so it's like he's a male nurse. Um, He seems like a really nice, sweet guy you know, decent guy, nice enough, but because he doesn't fit the mold of Jack, you know, it, there, there's some poking fun, right? And so they go over to the ex-fiance's house. He's wealthy. He's got this big house. Then, like, he's a carpenter. He loves Jesus. It's like in all of the areas where Greg is perceived as lacking, this man is just overachieving. Within the eyes of Pam's family, Right, but then just opposed against the ex fiance, Greg just looks terrible, right? 
it's like he carves out this beautiful um awning thing he's an athlete you know just like the worst time for this guy to stop by the house with greg being there and so greg feels insecure understandably i think it's something that would make most people feel uncomfortable and so you know greg tries to step up and to kind of match this guy's energy so they have like this pool volleyball game and you know, they make fun of Greg for not being aggressive enough, for being too soft. But then when he ratchets up the intensity, things go wrong. And, like, he ends up spiking the ball into the bride's face, the soon-to-be bride's face. And it's, like, just over the course of the movie, there's these multiple instances of him just bumbling along and really ruining Pam's sister's wedding. It's like, you know, violence isn't funny. He spikes the ball in her face. It's an accident. And everyone rushes over And it's like in the next scene, you see her, she's got like this crazy shiner. And so over the next scenes, every time you see her, she's just looking worse and worse. And then here it is that it's the wedding day. They're having problems with like the toilet and the septic tank and whatnot. Greg makes the mistake of flushing the toilet after being warned not to. Or rather, he's suspected of flushing the toilet. He tries to pin it on the cat, Jinx. And... Someone flushed the toilet, which leads to the septic tank overflowing. The lawn where the wedding is supposed to take place the next day is now overrun with like poop and sewage and whatnot. Someone backs up a car, which just creates an absolute mess. Greg is trying to give up smoking, but with all of the stress and tension and whatnot, he tries to sneak cigarettes. And literally things go up in flames. It's just... Everything that could go wrong does. Every awkward moment you've had in meeting someone's family, all of that plays into it. But I'm sure whatever we've experienced pales in comparison to the stuff that Greg goes through this weekend. And it all comes together to make an absolutely hilarious movie. It's a lot of physical comedy. And with that, like, you know, Greg's awkwardness. And um, Ben Stills is actually really great in this movie. I think it's one of his best. Over the course of the movie, there's kind of like layers to the film, where as you learn more about Greg, it just gets worse and worse. We don't come to like find out his full name. Like his last name is hilarious enough. And then later on, we find out his real full name. And it's like, as the story unfolds, it's like, this guy is innocent enough, but it just adds to like the intensity from the very beginning, right? But then it's like, you get this backstory information is revealed about him that just makes the situation more hilarious and then it's like you have jack who's like awkward in his own way he ends up like interrogating greg because he just happens to have like a lair in his basement it's over the top but at the same time subdue and it just strikes as like the perfect balance of comedy it makes for a really enjoyable movie it's a great comedy it came out i want to say maybe like it's probably like 20 years or so now But I would consider it to be like a classic now, like a modern classic. It's a great movie and one that I highly recommend. I think it's good watching for Thanksgiving while you have your family gathered around or the holidays. Thanks for tuning in. To ensure you don't miss any episodes, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and check out my movie review playlist. Go ahead and click the thumbs up button if you like what you saw, and go ahead and share it on social media.